All right. We do have three indicators of feed efficiency in livestock production. The first one, which is traditional, is FCR or feed conversion ratio. The second one, which is better than FCR, is residual feed intake. Residual feed intake is the difference between uh, observed feed intake and expected feed intake. And the last measurement is residual heat production, which is the residual of linear relationship between metabolizable energy intake and heat production. What's wrong with feed conversion ratio? that we say it's not a good measurement of feed efficiency. FCR does not account for variability in maintenance requirement caused by increase in age and body weight. And also our FI, even though residual feed intake can account for this variability in maintenance requirement it does not account for heat increment of feeding that's why we have a better measurement than fcr and residual feed intake which is called residual heat production or rhp the common problem of feed conversion ratio and residual feed intake is that environmental factors affecting maintenance requirement can bias the estimates of FCR and residual feed intake. It means that if your birds are beyond the comfort zone, it means that your barn is cold or hot it can increase maintenance requirement and both FCR and residual feed intake can be affected and their estimates will not be accurate so as I mentioned residual heat production is the residuals of a linear relationship between metabolizable energy intake and heat production. So why do we care about heat production and why do we need to measure heat production? In fact, measuring heat production will enable an animal nutritionist to precisely match energy supply with energy requirement and by that we will have a sustainable animal production what is sustainable animal production when we are talking about sustainability we are talking about three p people planet and profit it means that if you are operating an animal production system you shouldn't focus only on your profit you need to pay attention to planet it means that you need to minimize the footprint of animal production and also you need to take care about animal welfare which is a concern for people all around the world. So they are three pillars of sustainability. So this slide can give us an overview of residual feed intake. As you can see, metabolizable energy intake can be calculated by multiplying feed intake by the dietary energy level, right? So here, metabolizable energy intake is a function of maintenance, growth, and production, plus a residual. 
which is epsilon or e. So in statistic, we call it error, right? So here, this residual is called residual feed intake. It means that metabolizable energy intake is not exactly equal to maintenance requirement plus growth plus production requirement. And there is a residual over there. So our FI, if I would rewrite this equation, our FI would be metabolizable in intake minus the maintenance requirement plus growth requirement plus production requirement, right? So ME intake is the actual ME intake or observed ME intake. And that function uh, of maintenance, growth and production actually is the predicted metabolizable energy intake, which can be calculated using nonlinear mixed models, for example, in SAS software. So RFI is the difference between observed MEI and predicted MEI. We can figure out the concept of residual heat production by looking at this graph. Actually, this graph is from my paper uh, called Architecture of Broiler Breeder Energy Partitioning Models which is published in Poultry Science in 2022. You can see uh, there is a, you know, relationship between uh, metabolizable energy maintenance on the y-axis, or we call it um, total heat production, and metabolizable energy intake on x-axis. So, the residuals of this regression is called residual heat production or RHP. Or you can call it residual maintenance requirement.